Assalamualaikum and good morning to all of you. Welcome back to our PDPR session. So today I'm going to share with you okay, the next subtopic in chapter 2 which is 2.2 cell respiration and photosynthesis. Right. So class, by the end of this topic, you can communicate about the process of cell respiration and then the process of photosynthesis. Then you can differentiate the process of cell respiration and photosynthesis and explain how both of these process are complement to each other. Right. Okay. So we move to the cell respiration class. Okay. So, um, cell respiration actually can be divided into two. We have external respiration, which is the breathing, and internal respiration, which is cell respiration. Alright, so class. So, here, this process, at this part, okay, we call this is the external respiration because it involves the breathing. Okay, the exchange of gases between the organism and the environment. So, if you inhale the air, okay, this is you are uh, inhaling the air which is oxygen. Okay, so this process we call external respiration. And then, once you inhale the oxygen, so the oxygen will come to the lung, go to your lung. So, this process we call internal respiration which is the cell respiration occur where um, the cell respiration is the oxidation process and breakdown of glucose that occur inside living cells to release energy so means that the cell respiration is the ox uh, oxidize the glucose or breakdown of glucose okay to release the energy all right so next okay So here the uh, we will learn in detail about the cell respiration. Okay. So the cell respiration occur in the mitochondria. So we have learned about the function of the mitochondria um, to supply or to generate energy, right? Okay. So this is the living thing. All right. So we have the living things here. So we have the animal and the plant. So this plant during the respiration process, oxygen is inhale, right? So the oxygen will combine with the glucose to form the carbon dioxide, water, and this is actually energy, right? It will produce the energy. It means that the glucose is breaking down. Okay, or is oxidized to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So this energy actually is used for the life process, such as to do res um to do excretion, to digest, and so on lah. Okay. So ah, uh, this is the explanation. The cell respiration means that the process of breaking down food to release energy. And then the energy that is released will be used for the life process. Okay, and then the cell respiration requires oxygen. All right, so this is the equation. So this one you must remember the equation for the cell respiration. All right, so the oxygen that we inhale, okay, plus with the glucose, it will form the carbon dioxide, water, and energy. That is the word equation for the cell respiration. And remember, this process occur in mitochondria. Okay. Next, we move to the photosynthesis. And I am sure that most of you have the prior knowledge about this process, the photosynthesis. Alright, because you have learned uh, when you were in primary school about the photosynthesis. Okay, so as uh, it is same thing, which is the photosynthesis need or required light energy from the sunlight. Okay, and then the chlorophyll from the plant, from the green plant. So remember, the, the chlorophyll actually come from the chloroplast. So um. Where do you get this chlorophyll from the chloroplast? So remember, this is the okay, uh, okay. All right. So actually, this is the chlorophyll. All right. 
Okay, this is the whole thing here. The whole thing here, we call this is chloroplast. Alright, so don't misunderstood. What is the chloroplast? What is the chlorophyll? Okay, so and then, okay, light energy, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide from the environment. We need the carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. Okay, and then the water. Where do we get the water from the roots? The water and mineral. In the soil, we will absorb by the root. Alright, to produce what? To produce glucose and oxygen. Now, how to do the equation? How to write the equation for the photosynthesis? The first one is photosynthesis need a carbon dioxide. Okay, plus with the water. In the presence of light. And also the chlorophyll. Sorry, because we don't have enough space here. So, I will move. I will write at the below. To form a glucose. Right? To form a glucose. Plus, what else? Oxygen. Okay? So, uh, that is the word equation for the photosynthesis. Right? Um, here, okay, next we move to the, um, we know that, okay, during photosynthesis process, okay, the glucose or starch will be produced, alright, so we want to identify, okay, uh, the presence of starch in the leaf, in the plant, alright, so first, um, okay, this is the steps to test the presence of starch. Okay, starch ni, uh, it can be food or it can be your glucose that is produced during the photosynthesis process. Alright. Okay, first, um, you need to dip, okay, a leaf into the boiling water. So, why do we need to do this? To break the cell wall of the leaf, alright, or to soften it. Alright, after, after that, okay, you must fill, okay, half fill uh, a boiling tube with ethanol. Then, you put the ethanol here. Then, uh, after that, you put the boiling tube into the beaker containing hot water. Then, barulah, you put the leaf, right? And, after that, you can see that the ethanol function actually to remove the chlorophyll in the leaf. So, that's why the color in the <coughs> boiling tube change become green. Because of what? Because the ethanol remove the chlorophyll. So, chlorophyll is the green pigment. Okay. And then, what else? Okay. The third step is you put the leaf just now into the hot water. All right. Um, dip the okay for the few seconds to soften the leaf and after that you place the leaf on the white tile okay then you put the iodine solution so the iodine solution is the yellow solution yellow colored solution all right and then once you put the iodine into onto the a drop of iodine onto the leaf so the color of iodine solution change from brown or yellow to become dark blue okay if the starch is present all right so if there is the starch here what happened the yellow or the brown color will become sorry it will become the like a dark blue okay like this okay class uh, so this is the a few experiment to test okay the requirement of photosynthesis for example um the the light okay the photosynthesis need light so this is the experiment which is um we have two plant here and okay let's say uh this is the plant a here this is the plant a and this is the plant b okay plant a you put the plant a in the dark and then your plant B under sunlight. So, what happened? Okay, starch only present in the plant that exposed to the sunlight. Because of what? Because the photosynthesis 
can occur with the presence of light. So, bila photosynthesis berlaku, then the starch will present. Alright, understand? And then next, the requirement of photosynthesis, uh, the second requirement of photosynthesis is the chlorophyll. Okay, so you take a variegated leaf. Okay, variegated leaf means that uh, there is a part where it has the green pigment, green leaf here, which is below the green leaf. When it has the green part of leaf, it means it has the chloro. Plus, okay, and then this is non-green part of leaf. So how, how to um determine okay that this plant um can produce starch or not? So we use the um iodine uh, test, which is starch can present in the green part of leaf which contain chlorophyll. That's me when you do the iodine test, okay, only the green part of leaf can turn become the dark blue. Right? Uh, it means that only this part has a starch. Alright, so then the third requirement of photosynthesis is carbon dioxide, which is uh, the experiment uh, is set up like this. Which, okay, the, this is the pot A and then this is pot B. So, um, the pot A consists of potassium hydroxide solution, which is the function of this potassium hydroxide solution to absorb, absorb what? Absorb carbon dioxide. So, it means that the plant A doesn't have carbon dioxide doesn't get the carbon dioxide so air without the carbon dioxide and then what happened only starch only starch can present in the plant b because of what because plant b get enough sunlight get the carbon dioxide the water and also chlorophyll so that's why the starch only present in the plant B and then the last requirement for photosynthesis is the water. So if you can see pot A and pot B, the starch only present in the plant A because of what? Because it got the sun, uh, it has the light energy, okay, it got the water, chloroplast and also the carbon dioxide from the environment. So that's why only, uh, okay, <clears throat> the starch only can present in the plant A. Alright, next. <clears throat> Alright, class. So, now we move to the difference between the cell respiration and photosynthesis. Right. So, cell respiration occurs in mitochondria. Okay. So, remember your mitochondria. And then, uh, photosynthesis occur at your chloroplast so the rest cell respiration of course it release energy but for this one they absorb energy from the sunlight and then cell respiration use chemical energy in food right but for this one photosynthesis use energy from the light okay respiration occurs in human the animal plants okay and also at mitochondria mitochondria my sorry microorganism but for photosynthesis only occurs in plants and certain microorganism cell respiration break down glucose okay but for the photosynthesis it synthesis glucose synthesis uh, it means that making food making all right making glucose or making food so, the cell respiration use glucose and oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. This is the equation for the cell respiration. But photosynthesis use carbon dioxide and water to produce oxygen and glucose. The cell respiration occur at all times but photosynthesis only occur when there is light. Okay, next. The relationship between cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Right. Okay, even though the respiration and photosynthesis is the different process, but they are complement to each other. So, if you can see here, during the cell respiration, what happened? Oxygen is absorbed. During respiration, the oxygen is absorbed. 
and carbon dioxide is released. So the carbon dioxide is released and will be used by the green plant to produce glucose and oxygen. Then the oxygen kemudian okay is used okay by the plant, the human and the to do the cell respiration. So the release carbon dioxide will be used by plant to carry out photosynthesis. And then the photosynthesis produce oxygen that is needed by organism for the cell respiration. Right? So I think that's all for our lesson today. So if you have any question, you can ask me. Alright?